Some holiday plants make great year-round house plants, while others are a little more disposable. Poinsettias more than likely are going to be one of your more disposable plants, but they come in such a beautiful array of types and colors these days, they're always fun to have around for Thanksgiving and Christmas. You have the standard reds like we've always had, beautiful pinks, cream colors to almost white, and then even some of these gorgeous bicolored forms that we see uh, on our store shelves now. Typical care for a poinsettia, they're tropical plants, they're native to Mexico, so they like it warm, and uh, they like to be evenly moist, not dry out uh, too much. They don't want to sit in water, so you also need to be careful. They almost always come in one of these little plastic sleeves, and very rarely do these have a hole in the bottom. So you can easily fill them up uh, with water and drown your poinsettias if you're not careful. Holiday cactus, Christmas cactus, Thanksgiving cactus, they go by several names now, make great year-round house plants. They're easy to grow and they're easy to get them to rebloom every year because they respond to the short days. As the days of autumn get shorter, the cactus respond to the shortening of the days, more dark hours at night, and they'll set buds just like this one is and flower sometime between Thanksgiving and Christmas, depending on the conditions in your own home. One thing that I'll say about both of these plants, if you uh, try to keep your poinsettias over from year to year, they're not hard house plants to grow, but they are a little more difficult to get to bloom. Just like the holiday cactus, they respond to the shortening of the days in the fall, but they are very, very light sensitive. A lamp on in another room, a street light shining in from a window will be enough light to cause your poinsettias not to reflower. So if you have a spare bedroom that you don't use, a card table or a TV tray in front of a window where they get good light, but no street lights from outside are a great place to uh, put your poinsettias when you bring them in, maybe in September. And then as the days naturally get shorter, it will cause them to flower uh, around the holidays. Another holiday plant that's always fun to grow, and especially if you have kids, are amaryllis. These giant bulbs will produce at least two stalks and sometimes three of big trumpet-shaped blooms ranging from red to white to pink. Uh, and they'll flower beginning oh, a couple of weeks before Christmas, depending on when you start them, uh, all the way through the holidays and into the first of the year. Now, most people just take an amaryllis, pot it right up in a pot, water it, and expect it to grow. But I'm gonna give you a couple of uh, industry tricks to uh, get your amaryllis off to an even better start and one of those is to soak the roots over overnight or even for two nights in some water. So you set them in something like a measuring cup or a vase, top of a vase. You're going to fill to about here. You want the roots of the amaryllis bulb in the water, but not this brown basal plate, this hard basal plate, that can cause rot. So you're just looking to fill with water up to about this line, let them soak for about 24 to 48 hours with your heating pad on low so that this water stays nice and warm. And that will initiate root growth. Then you're going to pot it up. You can use regular potting soil. I actually like to use cactus mix uh, with my bulbs. It's a little more coarse. It's actually got some wood chips and things in it. It drains faster and that way bulbs don't like to be wet all the time. That way you've got really good drainage in your soil. The other tip that I'll give you is to actually plant your amaryllis a little deeper than you're usually told. A lot of times the instructions will say just bury the bottom part of the bulb so that your bulb is almost sitting on top of the soil. But what happens is if it doesn't root really well, when that tall stalk comes out, then your bulb tips back and forth where it can. So if you plant just a little bit deeper, just leave the neck of the bulb sticking out and that will give you more stability once this has rooted in and you've got a tall stalk blooming then your pot, your amaryllis, uh, stays a little more secure, doesn't wobble around so much. 
Once you see good growth coming out the top of the bulb, then you can begin regular watering and just uh, keep it barely moist. They do not want to be wet, um, but just nice and damp uh, in the brightest window that you can give it so that it's got plenty of sun. Another fun bulb to force for the holidays or any time during the winter season are paper white narcissus. And I think all of us have done this at some point or another. One of the challenges with paper whites though is that they tend to stretch, get tall, and flop very quickly. So I'm gonna give you a couple of hints. First of all, don't keep them too wet. This is a jar full of just standard white marble chips uh, that I purchased at my local garden center. What I would do is take about a half a cup of water, put in here, shake it up, just get the, the gravel damp. So, pour your gravel right into your container and nestle the bulbs right into the gravel. Don't add any more water at this point. Just let the gravel be damp. Once you can stick your finger down in there three or four or five days from now and it's dry in the top half inch or so, add just a little bit of water, maybe two or three tablespoons at the most. So you never want this basil plate to actually sit in water because it can rot. You just want water, enough water to get roots to form and the roots will go down into the water. One other thing that you can do for winter interest and winter bloom indoors is force spring bulbs. This takes a little more know-how and I'm going to give you a couple of quick tips on how to do this successfully. You can force tulips, you can force daffodils, uh, you can force grape hyacinths, crocus, any of those little small spring flowering bulbs. If you choose tulips, I would choose early flowering varieties. Daffodils make great forcing subjects, especially the miniatures. And then some of these, uh, you'll notice these are called Tazetta. That is similar to a paper white or a type of paper white. Some of them are hybrids. Really fragrant, great to have indoors for the winter. But what you wanna do with your bulbs, this takes a little more planning. So you're actually going to pot them in soil this is a tulip bulb. This brown papery covering is called a tunic, and we're just going to peel a little bit of that away from the top of the bulb so that it doesn't stop it from sprouting. Sometimes they get hung up, but if you peel just a little bit of that away, then the top of the bulb is exposed and the sprout can come right out of there. But all you have to do is fill your pot with soil Nestle your bulbs down into the top of the soil, about a half an inch apart. Water them in good, and then take some washed pea gravel or other kind of decorative stone, and you're gonna pour that right in around the top of the bulbs to help hold them upright. Got one more here to finish it off. You're going to leave just the tip of the bulb exposed in the top of the gravel. The gravel's going to give a little weight to hold the bulbs in place. Now, you've watered this. The trick to spring flowering bulbs is that they must root in in the cold. So, put this in the refrigerator, put this in an unheated garage, maybe your garden shed, where it needs to stay for a minimum of eight weeks. Once eight weeks has passed by, you can move these into a warm room and they will sprout and flower. They may not be in time for Christmas, but they'll certainly be there in time for January, February, those short days of winter when the nights are really long and we're desperate for something flowering. You can have beautiful pots of bulbs on your windowsills throughout the winter. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.